This episode is sponsored by Adult X Funding. Are you struggling to find funding for your adult industry project? Adult X Funding is a new crowdfunding platform for all types of adult business projects worldwide. We have a network of investors who are looking for exciting adult entertainment projects. Pitch your project today at adultxfunding.com. Do you have a sexy voice, excellent communication skills, and a great media personality? Then we invite you to become a host of the new talk show for the adult entertainment industry. As our host, you will interview the sexiest strippers, escorts, porno performers, and other adult entertainers worldwide. You will also interview owners and managers of all types of adult businesses around the world. If you're interested in this opportunity, please visit our website for more details at adultindustrytalk.com. Terry is in the house with us. Uh, let's just say a quick hello to Terry before we make the announcements. Terry, how are you doing today? I'm fine, thanks, Charlie. Glad to be back again. Okay, good. It's good to have you back. Uh, we ha- I haven't spoken to you for ages. It's been almost 24 hours. Yeah, almost. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, let's make a few announcements before we go into our discussion. Uh, f- uh, you know... A week ago, we relaunched Adult Industry Association, which is an international umbrella organization for adult industry businesses, professionals, and subscribers worldwide. Our mission is to further disrupt society's negative and stereotypical views about the adult industry and its stakeholders, and to make the industry a more safe, rewarding, and fun place to work, do business, and for pleasure. We invite all persons listening to the show to support this meaningful initiative by signing up for free membership. Check us out at adultindustryassociation.org. We're looking for qualified persons in major cities worldwide to become chapter managers of Adult Industry Association. As part of our global development, management and expansion strategy, Adult Industry Association is divided into chapters. Each major city worldwide will become uh, an AIA chapter and it's, and will be managed by a chapter manager. For more information, simply go to our website and follow the links on, to, on our homepage to go to Adult Industry Jobs or message us at adultindustryassociation at gmail.com. Okay, I know you're all waiting to hear what Terry has to say. So, Terry is in the... Blah, 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 blah. Rewind. Terry is in the house. Terry is the producer and of uh, sorry of Real Couples Porn Site. It's Sunday, mm-hmm. and uh, for the next fifteen to thirty minutes, I'm going to take Terry to church. Terry, my <laughs> friend. <laughs> Terry, how are you doing? <laughs> I'm great. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, I've never I've never heard of porn church before, but I like it already. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, okay, before we get started, um, I would like to take this opportunity, Terry, to congratulate you on your recent appointment as the chapter manager for London for Adult Industry Association. Well done, my friend. Thank you very much. I hope I do right by uh, all our supporters. I'm sure you will. Okay, let's go right to it. Now, how on earth do you get everyday, ordinary couples to perform sexual acts in front camera or sorry on camera for the whole world to see uh it wasn't that difficult considering that everybody we know as porn stars are regular everyday people anyway um i guess i was shooting couples before i started shooting real couples so it wasn't that difficult i think i already had a reputation for years anyway for shooting adult content already Uh, but what I did when I first started out um, and the interesting thing about that was my route into shooting real couples really started because um, I got tired of the politics between the guys and girls who worked in the business and I found there was a better chemistry between those who were partners in real life Uh, and there was also a sudden turn with girls who only wanted to work with their partners um once i started that up uh it wasn't long before i kind of cornered the niche and what helped raise my profile in this area was winning awards uh, i mean i did kind of win sorry, i did 
did do, do quite a few shoots already before I got noticed uh, for shooting couples. And then, I, and then it was just natural. Uh, couples would just come to me and said, they'll see a site called Real Couples. Um, it was a niche site. And yeah. they said that, well, um, the, a lot of couples who only want to work with their partners uh, just got in touch with me. Hmm. Okay. Well, when you first told me about the website, without having seen anything, and I still haven't seen it because I was hoping to get a quick, a sneak peek or preview of uh, some of the content, but uh, we didn't have time to get that sorted. But when you told me about real couples right away, I I deduced that it it obviously has more appeal. It would be to me to see a real couple uh, performing sexual acts rather than to to porn actors or, or actresses or whatever the case is uh because it's it's more real mm -hmm. is, is that well, the sort of response you get from other people well i've always been keeping it real since i got in the business even with just regular performers but i, I think what, the, what i brought to real couples was again that whole keeping it real uh in other words um I say to couples to do what they wanted to do, not what they thought I wanted to do. So in other words, I would tell them to unlearn what they have learned. Uh, and what they did learn shooting regular porn was that porn was like four positioned in a cum shot where, you know, the guy would pull out and come over the girl's face. Let's face it, in real life, not many couples really do that. That's right. You know that they tend to, they tend to do it in a more loving way, and they kind of see climax out. Of, well, you know, you inside your woman when you're doing it, you don't just pull out and spray it all over her face. That is definitely a staple for um, um, adult pornography. Of course. So, but again, sometimes couples do, and some of the girls have admitted that they do enjoy that, and sometimes they do do that for whatever reasons that they like doing. So mm -hmm. I always said to them, just to keep it real, I said, don't go acting like porn stars, just. Um, just be yourselves, you know. So, in how other words, how much training or prep do you give them, you know, before they actually go into or go into a scene? I'll tell you one thing about me, Charlie, is that I speak a lot. Every couple will tell you that Terry speaks <laughs> a lot, and it's like, and the thing, and I, what, I think the reason why I do that is that I'm over drumming it into them, okay? And it's like, okay, we got it, Terry. We can be ourselves, which means that you know you don't have to just go into this whole staple will start kissing and then just doing it i spend a lot of time talking with them for a reason and i do shoot behind the scenes stuff on, on my site as well uh where it shows that process yeah mm -hmm. um and and what i do i i, I kind of take them out of the work element a little bit because they know that they're going to be doing a scene uh, I think porn couples, genuine porn couples who do work in the business can be a bit business-like about it and only have a certain way of working. So I try to make it more casual uh, by asking more personal questions that you wouldn't normally get on a porn scene. Okay. And I just I kind of become like a friend to the couple in a way. So they, they build up trust in you and they just know straight away, oh, so really you want to film us being us? And some of them have joked, actually. They said, well, if this was really us, Terry, we might just do it for 10 minutes, close it with the curtains closed, roll over, fart, and go to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's, it's okay, it's natural when it's more natural, as you say, when it's a couple, it's a, a real couple. However, yeah. it's not natural to be doing it in front of, in ca on camera and for the whole world to see. So how do you maintain that natural feel and, and, uh, and production quality when you're doing it? Because it can't be easy for them when it's, you know, you're, they're in front of a camera and, and you have got a production crew there. And how do you talk them through that? How do you get them beyond that, that um, stage s scenario? Well, first and foremost, when they get in touch with me, I am the be all and end all of that day. I am the only person. I'm not. I'm not a production crew. I don't bring makeup. I don't bring anyone. But a lot of people. I've been invited to a lot of people's homes. It's just me as a cameraman, um, and I feel that was necessary because the moment you start bringing production crews in, um, people start getting nervous it, it, and they start reacting accordingly as well. If, yes. if you're going to treat it like a big production, they're going to act like a big production. Mm -hmm. And the thing about a lot of amateur performers is that they cannot perform to that level where, you know, mm -hmm. they will get nervous and the scene will just collapse. Yes. 
Yes. Tell me so more I'll about keep the, it as in, I'll keep it as intimate as possible. Oh, tell me some more about the uh, the, the mechanics of um, of doing this. Um, they they contact you. How do they get in touch with you? What do you? How do you introduce them? Well, they already have an interest in doing this. How do you get them to the point of closing the deal, so to speak, for lack of a better expression? And then when you get there, just take us through that journey, that experience. Well, normally, uh, I would normally meet people in a social setting like a UCAT party or, um, or, or some event. Or if, or if I don't, uh, they would get in touch with me via email. Back in the day, it was usually via email, and they'd send a picture, and they'd, they'd send uh, some pictures of themselves, amateur pictures of themselves, yes. uh, and they would say that they would like, they've seen the site, they like the look of it and they'd like to be on it. So I'd get back in touch with them and I would ask them, what do they feel like? What, what do they feel comfortable in doing? Uh, mm -hmm. Then they will write back to saying, oh, sometimes they tell me their fantasies. Uh, and I would say, okay, let's, let, let's, because it's a first time shoot, uh, let's not get ahead of ourselves. I so said, I'd like to do something quite simple to start off with just to see what you're like. Yes. Uh, because some of them have, have had quite colourful fantasies, if you like, that I, I felt <laughs> to fund that, uh, you know, I said there's also the uh, logistics of organising certain shoots of threesomes. But when I've had threesomes where I've brought in performers to, you know, the, the, like the shag my wife kind of thing, yes. uh, I would insist that they use condoms. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, unless yeah. unless the, unless everyone's all in agreement that they've all got their tests, and then we could say we can do something without condoms. Uh, and I, I also felt that was also a part in, a part of keeping yes. my, keeping yes. it real. I then, have a, um, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, hang on. So what I was what I do is that I'd spend a bit of time explaining that to them. Sometimes it might, believe it or not, sometimes it could take anywhere between three months to six months to shoot them. Because what? sometimes they just they just yeah because sometimes they they're thinking about it, okay. uh, and sometimes some couples have actually said, "Can we meet you for a drink first? So that you know because mm -hmm. uh, they're really excited they're, they're really excited to do it and they're also nervous. So it would be nice if they could get to meet me. The ones that have already met me already have already decided that they're going to do it. So those what those shoots end up being a lot quicker, yes. but some of the shoots with real proper amateurs uh, not so quick. Uh, so I think a couple of them I might have had to wait for about up to a year before they decided to do it. Wow. You know, people who do not do porn think that mm -hmm. those who do are absolutely out of their minds. So you've been around porn performers and real couples for many years. Why do they do it? I, pers I, I developed this, this theory um, with couples that it was almost like a second wedding ring to them, especially if they were married. Uh, mm -hmm. Like sometimes some of the couples have been married for like a number of years already. When I say generally married, I like to show all examples of what kind of couple they are, especially during the, my line of questioning, chatting and uh, pictures. Sometimes they show me their, their family albums, you know, with, with, with the wedding pictures in just to prove that they're married. Um, you know, and, and just the way they related on camera, the way that they, 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 they casually talked to me kind of indicated that that familiarity i mean you'd have to be a really good actor to kind of convey that if they were fake you'd have yes. to be a really good actor to convey that they're, that reality mm, yes so, it, yeah. it must be okay do you start from the from the bedroom or do you pro, uh, sort of follow them uh, you know in the kitchen having dinner having a drink or a romantic evening you know watching telly then feeling horny going back to bed uh, how do you how do you um, you know produce it i take all the element out i i literally film them i, I, I set the camera up first because I, I find that by talking to them and documenting them being nervous contrasts quite well with the end result later on Yes. Uh, so I might get some casual banter, uh, some mm -hmm. casual talk before. Yes. We'll always start off with uh, one of the British pastimes, one of the great British pastimes is drinking cups of tea and mm -hmm. coffee. You know, we start off really casual having a conversation over there. Then I, I give them, I give them uh, automatic right if they have any questions to ask me, no matter how silly, just ask me. Yes. You know? Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and, and and we just see into it so by the time I turn up it might not be until about a couple of hours later before we start doing the photo shoot first mm -hmm. the, I always do the photo shoot because yeah. that's the bit where uh, they're usually very nervous yes 
Uh, and also, um, once they've overcome that fear, the video becomes a lot easier to do. Okay, yes, okay. Uh, does it have to be a husband, wife, boyfriend, girlfriend, or can you, do you, would you take two uh, persons who are not in a relationship, but, uh, you know, uh, in, a, in, a, in a shoot? I'll tell you the thing about, I think about shooting real couples is that you've got to be really broad minded what the couples are. This is, this is a thing. People, when you think of couples, everyone thinks of boyfriend, girlfriend, they're in love, but there are so many variations on the couples thing. You know, I mean, I've had all kinds of couples on the site. I've had the cheating couples, which I said, you know, if you're, if you're ever part of the kitchen, you do this. <laughs> you do realize it's on the internet. Okay. And that they may possibly kill you. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know okay. there's all kinds of scenarios I've had on there. I've had, I've had threesomes on there. I've had uh, I've filmed so, people's fantasies. So do you uh, have a, a waiver? Do you have a waiver that says that if your if your husband should see this and 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 should kill you, I'm not responsible? <laughs> what sort of oh, we discuss that. Do you have? We even oh, we discuss all that before I even okay. turn up to do the shoot. I mean, I've been all up and down the UK to do shoots. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I, I do warn them that, you know, the thing about the internet is that, you know, I, I, can't, I, it will be on the site. It could be, it could be out there on the internet because people are stealing stuff and put it on the tube site. So I said, you do understand that I can make no guarantees. I don't know who you know. So, you know, I, can't, I can make no guarantees that anyone you know is not going to see this. Okay. So I, I always suggest to them to use a stage name. I said, that's anything that I would say that if you're doing um, adult content in general, no, never to use a real name because if somebody used Google, they tapped it in, they put the word porn in, it'll come up, bing, 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 all the hardcore pictures you've ever done, yes. which is never going to be good for uh, mm -hmm. civilians trying to get a regular job who, who, who just do porn for fun. Do they make money doing this or is it just for the for the fantasy? In the ex you know? <laughs> One of my... They made more money on top of the money they got paid in the day. I have to give them their credit for this because they did an article in Closer magazine in the UK yeah. and they said they, they, they said that they did the video to raise money to go on holiday. Okay. So, so, okay. so, all of them, so not all of them do it for financial gain to like pocket and, and profit in that way. Sometimes they're doing it just to add some money to spending money that they save up to go on holiday. Yes. Mm -hmm. Have you had any couples who did it and then regretted they had done it? Yes, usually when they split up. <laughs> and again, that's not my fault or anything to do with me. Or when sometimes I develop a friendship with some couples mm -hmm. and uh, it gets to the point where they're both kind of the guy and the girl, you know, befriend me and when they split up it's almost like which side do I take so I make it quite clear to them that I'm not taking anyone's side here and sometimes it could get quite nasty because that's the thing about couples I've actually had I've actually filmed arguments on the set as well like for instance they might have had a bad morning mm -hmm. but when it comes to the sex you find that most couples are happy enough to still go ahead and do that because by the time they're done they're going to be happy but sometimes their personalities might conflict on the day for some issue that might have and before they turned up uh, I've got used to it now I mean a lot of this is a, this is one of the things that porn producers generally hate that's why they don't like shooting couples because they don't want to have to deal with their domestic situations on set yes. whereas I tell them that once I'm in your house you give me permission to be in your house I'm here to document everything Okay. And they look at me and laugh. They say, are you serious? Nobody wants to see this. I said, oh, yes, they do. <laughs> oh, yes. That's, yeah. a that's a reality it, take right there. Yeah, I, said, I, said, I said, what part of real don't you understand? When I said I was documenting everything, I'm in the arguments. I'm talking about when, when the woman's having a go at the man. And, you know, it's interesting to see the dynamic between a lot of couples where you do see that a lot of the women are in charge. And it, it, mm. it helped kind of um, form my philosophies about relationship dynamics as well. Yeah. Is it easier working with real couples as opposed to uh, professionals or more difficult oh no it's, it's for me i would rather work with even i mean I'm, i i won't kid you there's been a few there's been quite a number of porn stars in the industry who have done this with their genuine partners at the time and those are the scenes that some people think that aren't really real couples but i said yeah it's just as real couples i said if i look at you know if i co contrast this genuine performer uh, with 
um, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Smith from Sunderland, for instance. Yes. You know, it's interesting to see the the, 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 the the contrast between a professional performer, how they perform with their partners. Because I, I, when I went to Europe, nothing, nothing told me, spelled this out better to me, that a lot of the girls who would do very hardcore scenes Yes, are not, are not very hardcore in real life. When they did their partners, they were kissing them. They yes. would reassure them. Uh, their partners uh, have even admitted to me in interviews that you know. So I said, "How do you feel about you know your 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 wife working or your girlfriend working on a porn set for a company?" And, and they said they don't like it. Uh, but what can they do? They said, uh, "You know, um, are they jealous? Yeah, they 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 do feel this jealousy, but they get used to it because they know that's the job, mm-hmm. and it's something that they have to overcome themselves. But the fact that she's with them and they do things." you know, as a couple, means more than yes. the job. Okay. Well, tell me, do you, would you use uh, a couple uh, f- frequently in in your production or you prefer to get new faces as often as oh, you Oh, I, I have done. I've had my favourite couples over the years. I've, um, when I say my favourite couples, these were couples that uh, really kind of fit into my my view of what real couples was all about they were very into each other uh, they everything they did was a, a passionate act if you know what i mean whatever they did and no matter how wild it was uh, i mean because you know the holy grail of most pornographers is things like anal um but i'm i'm not a fan of that per se because uh, unless it's done with passion so I, I don't mind any explicit act as long as it's done with the right mindset. Of course. Uh, so, yeah, I've, I've encouraged models to... Uh, and sometimes um, couples can be more explicit than regular porn stars. <laughs> well, they, we're, going to, we're going to ask the magic question. I'm sure you've been asked this question so many times. And, um, and of course, it is... Do you get involved in the scenes? But before you answer that, we're going to uh, go to station identification. You're tuned in to Adult Industry Talk. I'm your host, Charlie Spice. And we're speaking with Terry Stevens, who is the producer and director of Real Couples. We're talking about his work as a producer and uh, uh, his brand, Real Couples, which is very exciting. We're going to take a short break. And when we come back, we're going to get the answer to that magic question. Do you have a sexy voice, excellent communication skills, and a great media personality? Then we invite you to become a host of the new talk show for the adult entertainment industry. As our host, you will interview the sexiest strippers, escorts, porno performers, and other adult entertainers worldwide. You will also interview owners and managers of all types of adult businesses around the world. If you are interested in this opportunity, please visit our website for more details at adultindustrytalk.com. Okay, we're back. We're talking to Terry Stevens from uh, Real Couples, and um, you're now going to get the answer to that magic question. Do you participate in the scenes with couples, or have you ever participated? (laughs) Well, you can't shoot that many couples without coming across some couples who will think that, well, if everyone in the adult business is uh, promiscuous by nature, uh, you know, do, would, do you join in? Um, only if I'm invited, but I've only ever been invited a couple of times. Mm. But it's not easy because, you know, when you're making a film, uh, it's difficult to kind of shoot and still focus on making the movie. So you have to become part of that scene. Of course, of course. But th- that would require another camera person or do you have the tripod set up and you can just, you know, have a, a short, a short, um, you know, participation? Uh, I, I kind of make it a short participation or what you do, you get the partner to hold the camera and they sometimes they love playing the producer aspect. So um, I've only ever done it a couple of times, but it's not something that you do often. And I think you also have to respect people's spaces as well. You've got to remember, just because I'm a producer, uh, I mean, you know what's been going on with Harvey Weinstein recently, right? Yeah, yeah. okay, oh yeah, <laughs> I've been listening. Yeah, yeah, well, you know, as producers, you know, it doesn't give you a license to start grabbing up people's wives and, and start, you know, thinking that, oh, just because they're in that way. And they're going to allow you to start. Oh yeah, I'll just I'll just have sex with your wife just because you're doing porn. It doesn't work that way at all. I think everything has to be 
kind of if you're going to do anything like this you will always be invited first because then it's rude to refuse yes <laughs> and you don't want to be rude <laughs> Well, I wouldn't want to be rude. I mean, sometimes, sometimes I've had to sort of politely decline because uh, if it's like really random, um, then I would say, well, there are things to consider like tests and, you know, they'll say, well, no, we're fine with it. I said, yeah, but I'm not fine with it because, you know, I have to look at things from a responsible producer point of view that, you know, you can't just throw things out there casually. Yeah, um, was, uh, you know there are liabilities and things that pe- people don't seem to think they think you can just point a camera at anything and shoot it doesn't work that way you have to think things yeah. through so everything the, isn't really as spontaneous as you think it might be I can imagine but I also suppose that it, a lot of it depends on how hot the, the wife is as well <laughs> yes uh, but also <laughs> it's okay if, well let me just weigh it up for instance if I know that the couple uh, were in the business, or say, for she was in the business. She had a yeah. test. If she gets her tests regularly, and he doesn't, okay. And I get my tests, then I say yes, that's fine. Um, I'm okay with that because I know that if everyone gets their tests done every mm. month, yeah. If we did catch something, we'd get treated pretty quick because unlike a lot of civilians who may get their test once every six months, people in the adult industry get their mm. tests done every month. Yes. And, okay. you know, if you're going to catch anything, it's usually something quite light, like mm-hmm. chlamydia, you know, which is not yeah. a big deal if it's, if it's treated mm-hmm. early. Yeah. You just don't want to catch the big heavyweight ones like uh, hepatitis and HIV and syphilis. Mm-hmm. I mean, oh, but then you, you, you'll see visual signs on most of those serious ones. Yes. Uh-huh. So, um, the, uh, if any UK couples happen to be listening to the show now or perhaps in the archives and wanted to participate, how did they go about it? Uh, well, they can easily find me on social media on Twitter at Real Couples or they can email me. I don't know, that's a good question. Whether, well, they used to be able to email me through the site, but my old blog's gone now, so I've replaced it with a Tumblr account. So it's Tumblr. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, forward forward slash uh, real couples so mm-hmm. uh, really you'll find me under real couples but I think if you look under Google for some reason it goes to Pornhub first oh, I you're not okay. going to find me there <laughs> Let, let's make it very simple Terry yeah. is now on Adult Industry Association website <laughs> yeah under Terry Stevens and uh, you can find him there so that is it's quite easy to find Terry yeah yeah. Uh, fantastic. Well, Terry, we have uh, come to the end of our discussion. I, it's very interesting stuff. What, what else would you like to say to anyone listening to the show about real couples, um, and also to uh, the? B- before you do that, I did have a question. Before it's just come back to me. Mm-hmm. It is difficult at times for real. What well, I shouldn't say real, but for for professional porn performers to uh, particularly the, the man to have an erection join a scene how do mm-hmm. real couples overcome that because in front of a camera it can be I imagine very difficult for the man to be sexually aroused his dick may be very camera shy well what I've always done is uh, I've always divided my attention between the couples in other words I've never left the guy out so I might make Mm. comments about his wife being attractive and pretty Mm. you know so therefore but I'd also include him in the conversation I might ask him questions Mm. uh, Mm. and you know once you start getting that relationship going where they're they're joking and they're you know they're joking with each other you know they're they're, they're warming to you it always starts with that kind of nervous laugh and then it comes onto more confident laugh you know, and then it becomes like, oh, okay, we're in charge here. You're in our house, so you're yes. filming us at your time. And, and you know, whenever a guy has that problem, I will just literally say, look, mate, don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. I said, I don't expect you to be a porn star. I said, I expect you to be yourself. I said, I'm sure your your wife, t- your partner, knows how to ring them bells when 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 the time's right. I said, just take your time. I said, if anything, let's just uh, let's just break for a few minutes. Let's have a coffee. Yeah. So the tune rag, watch some TV or whatever. I said, or oh, do whatever you feel makes you comfortable. Yes. You know, I don't encourage. Mm-hmm. I don't encourage things like Viagra. I don't encourage things like injections. But I've I've only heard that in, on European porn sets. Funny enough, okay. uh, uh, but um, 
yeah, I don't even encourage that they look at porn. I, I tell you the reason why because if you start changing the dynamic to uh, him looking for other sources to get turned on, the woman can sometimes go a little bit cold from that. It's like, oh, what, am I not good enough? Mm, yes, and the, and, the, and the last thing, last thing you ever want to do is alienate your woman on the set because she's the real star of that day. Ultimately, the women are the real stars of this business. Of course, absolutely. Well, Terry, I want to thank you very much for taking time to come on the show to chat with us. We'll, I'm sure we're going to have you back on again. And um, yeah. it's been very informative. But we're going to have to bring this to a close. Terry, I'm going to speak to you after the show. But uh, So I'm just going to put you on mute and uh, we're going to bring the show to a close. So, Terry, thank you very much for uh, taking the time and, to, and for giving us an insight into your world. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Great. Okay, well... You were listening to Terry Stevens um, on Adult Industry Talk. Terry is the director and producer of um, Real Couples Porn Site. And it's, it has been a very interesting discussion. I'm sure I'm going to get lots of feedback to it. But we have run out of time, so we're going to bring the show to a close. And thank you very much for giving us an audience. Have a wonderful day. Unfortunately, we have come to the end of this episode of Adult Industry Talk. I would like to thank our sponsors, guests, and our production team. I would also like to thank our listeners for tuning in and giving us an audience. We appreciate your support. If you have an interesting experience, opinion, or agenda about the sex or adult industry to share with our audience, we invite you to be a guest on the show. Please contact our production team at charliespice at gmail.com or visit our website at adultindustrytalk.com. We hope you enjoyed our broadcast. You can listen to a repeat of this episode in the archives at any time in the future. Simply go to our website and follow the links. I am your host, Charlie Spice, saying bye for now, peace and love, and out.